Uh, Prof. John Zulinski, how are you today? I'm very good. Can you hear me? Of course. Your voice is already clear. The connection is good. We hope that this connection is still going on and stable until you finish for uh, the presentation. So I will give the floor to you after you present. We will have question and answer after this. And it's about probably one hour from now. But your time for presentations is yours. You can manage by your own. Uh, Prof. John, can you uh, try to share your screen or you have PowerPoint to share? Uh, I am able to share my screen, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, nice. So the time is yours, Prof. John. Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Arbane and uh, my host. It is a, a great honor to be here. Um, with you in Indonesia, um, and I'm speaking to you from San Francisco <clears throat> in the United States, um, and uh, I am delighted to be connected um, to you. I'm here to speak about open journal systems, uh, about OJS, um, and why I am so delighted um, is told by this picture, this map. You can all see this map, I assume? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this map shows the users of open journal systems. I'm going to talk a bit about open journal systems. I'll give you some background. But let's just start with this publishing platform called open journal systems and how it's being used around the world. Because this is a story very much about Indonesia. Uh, and so part of my pride of having this chance to speak with you is shown by these numbers. We have, uh, with OJS, we have, as it says down here, 34,000, over 34,000 now, that was in 2021, 34,000 journals using our publishing platform, which is the largest, most widely used in the world. Um, and that's partly because it's free. When something is free, it gets used. So I, I don't want to take too much credit. Um, but if you look at these numbers, there's one number that jumps out, and that is the 16,419 in Southeast Asia. And of those 16,419, I'm willing to bet that 15,000 are in Indonesia. So Indonesia is a country almost as large as America. Indonesia is the largest Islamic country population of the world and Indonesia is a proud democracy and a democracy with a very strong education system. And so we are delighted to be part of that. We are delighted to be part of the research. And again, if you look at this map, you can see that Indonesia is the most widely, sorry, is using OJS the most extensively of any country. So those journals represent every form of research. Those journals represent students and faculty. Those journals represent the work of an entire nation and those in Southeast Asia that contribute to it. And I want to give you some background, some understanding, um, because our story is connected. I have been doing this work for 25 years. In those 25 years, my connections with Indonesia have only grown. And I, in fact, this is the first time uh, I've had the chance uh, to speak uh, in Indonesia, even if remotely. So it is uh, quite exciting for me. Let me give you some background. Let me tell you about how this happened. Let me tell you where OJS, Open Journal Systems, where it came from um, in terms of its origins. I mentioned the 25 years, and that's an important aspect of the story. It goes back to my own story, um, and let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm not a software developer. 
I'm not a publisher. I am a teacher, a school teacher. I taught children for 10 years. Many of you have children. The children I taught were from 10 to 14 years old. And I taught them for 10 years before I went on to do my PhD. And then I became a researcher. I became a professor of education. And I taught teachers. And I'm sure there are many, many, many million teachers in Indonesia. And I'm sure there are many teachers of teachers. But 25 years ago, when I was teaching teachers in 1998, some of you may have to ask your parents about this, but in 1998, the internet was still new. And I was excited about how we could share information on the internet. And in 1998, I had the chance to work with a newspaper to begin sharing research online. And what I discovered in 1998 is that I couldn't share the research. The research was not online and the research was not free to share. It, the library paid for subscriptions and the research was not available to the public. And so we had a difficult time with the newspaper sharing the research that the newspaper was writing about. And I decided that there was something wrong with that. How could I teach students to read when they wouldn't be able to read research, scholarship? They wouldn't be able to, when they grew up, they wouldn't be able to access journals. And so in 1998, I decided that I needed to do something about what wasn't yet called open access. I needed, as a school teacher, to make more research and scholarship available to students, to their parents, and to the students when they grew up. So at that point, I went from being a professor of education, while well, I was still a professor of education, but at that point, I decided I needed to do something about how research and scholarship was shared. And so I decided that I would start work on this project. And I called it the Public Knowledge Project. Because I wanted knowledge to be public. I wanted knowledge to be freely available. And at the time, it was locked up in subscriptions. It wasn't yet moved online. And so we went to work on how we could help research move online. And this is where Indonesia comes in, because you've done such a great job with moving research online. But in 1998 and in 2000 and 2001, no, there were very few electronic journals. This may be before your time, but, but you must imagine what things are like then. And again, you can ask your parents or your grandparents about 1998 and 2000 to remember what that was like. So what I did at the time was we decided that how could we help journals move online? How could we begin to share this information? We needed to build a platform. We needed to build a place for journals to publish online. And this in the year 2000 had just begun to happen. It was very expensive, people told us. It would be, and it was very risky to move your journals online. So we decided we would build a free system, an open source system that would be free on the idea that journals would begin to share their work. And so we built in 2001 and two open journal systems, a platform that would help scholars and researchers begin to share their work. And in that time, when we built it, there were no journals using it, zero. And I had a chance to travel 
with the MacArthur Foundation Fellowship for Peace. It was for World Peace and Cooperation. And I had a chance to travel to Southeast Asia, to the Philippines, to Singapore, to Hong Kong, not to Indonesia, I'm afraid. And I had a chance to travel to Africa and to Latin America and to India to show them the uh, OJS in 2003, okay? When I came back from that trip around the world, I had not one single journal. I had not convinced anyone in 2003 to use OJS to move their journals online. There were journals being published in Manila, in the Philippines, in Singapore, but they didn't want to move online in 2003 and four, You jump ahead 20 years to 23 and you see this map. And in 20 years, Singapore has gone from no journals on OJS to 15,000 journals on OJS. What we used to say in the, is that there are 30,000 journals in the world, and some people still believe that. But I know it's not true. I know there are 15,000 journals in Indonesia. And the possibility, and those journals are in Bahasa, they're in English, they're bilingual. There is a richness of research in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines. And because of that, we have been working very hard to make sure that that research is shared and exchanged. And I want to show you a number of ideas about how OJS works in that way. Um, but let me just point out to you that we built OJS in a special way, not like Facebook. No, not like Google search. No, we built it so you could install it. We built it so it could be locally installed and there could be local capacity. So those 15,000 journals in Indonesia are installed in Indonesia. And that was our goal, was to build local capacity with servers and technical support so that the journals would be locally developed and would be in local languages. Bahasa is the fourth most widely used language. English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Bahasa are the four, four most frequently used languages. And this is a very empowering aspect. Now, in Indonesia, English is a large part of the journal pop population, but the Indonesian language is also a very big part of it as part of this. So that was one very important principle. The other part of it is we built the platform to do two things. So OJS is a publishing platform, but it's also an editorial workflow. OJS encompasses all of the steps of scholarly publishing. If you install and use OJS, you are following the scholarly standards of the world. These standards are practiced around the world and they make research different, journalism, different than Facebook conversations, different than Instagram and TikTok. They bring a different quality to research because OJS builds in all of the steps. The editor needs to review the submission. Peer review needs to be conducted. Copy editing and production. So that aspect of research that sets it apart in this age of misinformation is very important. And I will come back to this question again. 
Now, one of the things that we did in 2003 and 2004, I'm still doing the history here, is we connected to Google Scholar. Now, this was controversial. Google Scholar is part of Google. It's a big corporate commercial enterprise. And some people felt, no, 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 no. Your OJS is coming out of a university. OJS is not commercialized. OJS is free. It's not a business. It's a university operation. So we shouldn't be working with Google and Google Scholar. Well, we had that discussion for a month. And then we realized that if we were going to serve the journals, we needed Google Scholar to help index the journals. We needed to help them be discovered. We were gonna create an index, but it is a huge job. It's hard to maintain. It's hard to keep regular records. So in 2004, we decided to start working with Google Scholar. We decided that it was more important to help the journals be discovered, share their knowledge, discover each other than it was to keep a high and mighty principle of not working with a commercial entity, a corporate giant like Google. Now, I have to admit, one of my sons works at Google, so I'm slightly compromised here. Our children are very important to us. But at any rate, it, I don't make these decisions by myself. It was part of the team that finally decided that. So that was an important aspect. And I can show you what it means about in terms of indexing. This is a very important question for editors out there. And I will, uh, just for a second here, change my view. So look. So this, uh, sorry, here. This is, this is a table from a study we did that, this will take a moment for you to, is that clear enough? Arbain, is that, can you read it's that? It's clear enough, yes. You okay. can make it maximized. Could you make it maximized? M make it larger? Yeah. No, I mean make it maximized into the whole screen. The whole screen, maxim uh, no, uh, maximize. No, I can't Maximize. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, that's that's fine. Uh, Prof. John, it's already visible. We can read it from here. Everyone's okay. in Zoom's already clear. It's okay. 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 Just go on, just please. For a second here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right here. So, uh, this, these are the indexes. These are the various indexes. There's Google Scholar, and these are the number of journals that are in. Uh, in the index, all of the journals. These are journals using OJS. Get it? Journal using OJS. So in Google, we don't know how many, they won't tell us how many journals are in the Google in Google Scholar. That's a secret because it's a private company. We know the other ones. We know the Web of Science only has 24,000 journals. But you'll see that Google Scholar has 88.3% of OJS journals, 88.3%. So in Indonesia, with 15,000 journals, that means over 14,000 of them are in Google Scholar. Look at the web of science, you'll see it's only 1.2%. When you look at EBSCO, 3.4, Scopus, 7.2%. So this is a concern to us. We want to help our journals get indexed. In Latin America, there's a special index, and we have a lot of journals in Latin America. 66% of the journals are indexed in Latin America, in Latindex, excuse me. This one's very important. This is the directory of open access journals. Here, we have 20% of OJS journals, but we encourage all journals to apply. And 
we are we have worked with DOHA, the Directory of Open Access Journals, to help increase that number. Now, a lot of the concerns these days is about predatory journals. Predatory journals. And when you have 50... And I'll share, share that with you in a moment to help all journals, including Indonesian journals, become clear or clearly identify that they are not predatory because we know it's a very small percentage. So in that regard, we need to have a look at what I'm calling the integrity initiatives of OJS. What I want to do um, is share with you what we're going to do. So the rest of the talk, for another 10 or 15 minutes, I want to talk about new developments in OJS. What is coming in OJS? You've been waiting for this, Arvind? <laughs> I'm sorry I made you wait so long, but you needed a little history. So I, will, uh, I want to present two kinds of information to you about what's coming. One is about integrity, and one is about technical developments, okay? So let me show you what we're looking at for integrity. So this is a typical, this is a test journal. You can see this clearly? Yes. Okay, thank you. This, this is a test journal where we're doing experiments. Um, this is an article, and I will, uh, take you to, actually, I'll take you to the other article. Let's go have a look at the other article. I will take you to one of the articles. And this is the landing page for the article. Any dog owners out there? This is about dog genomics. At the bottom of the article, we have a new thing we're just trying out. It's not ready yet. You're one of the first groups to see it. We're just developing it. But I hope in the spring, you'll be able to use it, okay, in 2024. This is called Publication Facts. And this is just like when you buy soup, when you buy food in the store, does it have the nutritional facts on it in Indonesia? Can you look at the ingredients? Yes, I'm sure you can. So this time, watch when I click it, it's going to be magic. Bingo, here are the publication facts. Are you able to read that? Yes, it's nice. It's like the ingredients that we see in package. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I designed it to look just like the ingredients because it tells you the ingredients of research integrity. It shows you who the publisher is with a link to the publisher. It shows you the editorial team with their orchids and it tells you not only for this journal and for this article but for other journals and other articles so if i go to the editorial team i can see the editorial team and i can look at their orchid profiles I know the number of the percentage of articles that are accepted. I can see the indexes. This one is indexed in GS. Can you guess what that is? Google Scholar. It's at Medline, Web of Science, Scopus. And it shows you the average for indexes. Here, it shows you the peer reviewers were two, two peer reviewers for this article. That means it's not a predatory journal, but you can see the, pre the peer reviewers, but not for this article from previous articles. So it's still a blind review. And again, the orchids, you can see who the reviewers are. 
These are all checks for integrity. There could be competing interests. So we ask people to declare, are you, you own a business that's using this research? Is the data available? Uh, who funded the research? This is a research on dogs, and guess who funded it? A dog site funded it at Darwin's Ark, a funder of dog research. So do you see how then this label, which will appear on every article, which will be automatically generated in OJS, the editors won't have to do any work. All of the information, once it's set up, there's a little bit of setup, will be publicly available to the readers on every article, but not till the spring. Let me show you another aspect. We want to educate the public. Remember, I'm a school teacher. I'm concerned about school kids learning to read. So if they don't know what peer reviewers are, they can click on peer reviewers and up comes information about peer reviewers. They don't know what the ORCID is. There's an explanation of ORCID. And so each element has an explanation. Now that's better than the back of the cake box. That's better than the food ingredients. You can't get the information in the background. So this publication facts table will be a plugin, an option that we hope to release in 2024 for those journals who want to experiment with it. And we'll send out a notice to see if there are journals that are interested in using it. But let me turn now to some of the new features and how to get new features into OJS. Would you be interested in learning about new features and how to get them into OJS? <laughs> Yes, you would. I'm betting you would. All right. Oops, I don't want to do that. Let me move on to, in terms of my uh, slides. So, in fact, I could put this uh, into GitHub, uh, into chat. I haven't done any chats. I'll share with everyone there. Um, so this is our roadmap for OJS. This is a public roadmap that we share with everyone. And I put the link in chat. Right now, we're at OJS 3.4. And you can see each of the things that have, have a check mark are already in 3.4. I'm going to take you into the future in a minute. But you can click on these and see the issues in GitHub and learn more about them. So in the current version of, of 3.4 that's available now, you can track institutional subscriber usage. You can look at, we've improved the statistics handling. We have counter release five for libraries, which is a standard for library usage. Um, the site administrators have global, I, mean, I don't want to take you through all of these, but these are all the changes in the current version. And you can see how many changes we've been making. But what's interesting about this, I hope, is that you can then look at the new version, 3.5, that will be coming out probably at the end of the coming year. We have about a year and a half between releases. And you can see that for each item that we're adding, we have its status, we have its whether communities in supporting it, whether it's an enhancement, whether it's a meta issue, meaning it covers everything. And you can click on the, the item and get a summary of it. And this link is, I put in the chat, is available to everyone. It's open to the public. 
and you are welcome. Now you should copy it. For, you should uh, click on it in chat because it'll disappear at the end of this call and then save it. But this allows you then to track where we are. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, to track where we are um, in the development of PKP OJS. We also have the roadmap for other forms for OMP and for OPS. You can see it goes forward to 3.6. It's brand new. We haven't really, as it's way out in the future, excuse me. Um, we also have a timeline, which we haven't really started because we're, we're just getting underway, that shows where we are in terms of progress. This is our date, and this is where we'll be starting development of 3.5. So the uh, here's ORCID again. We're going to be merging ORCID metadata. And again, you'll notice that OJS and OMP and OPS. So OJS is Open Journal Systems. OMP is Open Monograph Press. And OPS is Open Preprints Systems. You know, Arbane, preprints would be a good thing to think about for your group. Um, uh, the preprint server in Japan, the preprint server in Brazil are very active. And it's a similar, what we do is we develop all three together. So you, if you know how to use OJS, you know how to use Open Monograph Press and Open Preprint Server. They use the same architecture. They have different functions. Preprints don't have peer review. Preprints aren't published, they're posted. Open Monograph has book chapters. Open Monograph has edited volumes. But you know how to use them if you know how to use OJS. So these three are all developed together. And this shows you how they're being developed together. The final thing I want to show you is how do you suggest new ideas not on this page this is only this is our record what you need to do is you need to go to pkp community forum so pkp community forum i'll put that in the chat as well PKP Community Forum is where you can ask questions about PKP. You can see announcements. You can get software support by asking questions. You can learn about regional networks. We have networks in German, Italian, Spanish, the European community. We don't have one yet in Bahasa. We could. That simply request it, but the most important one is feature requests. If you want a new feature in OJS, you go to feature requests and you sign up and add a request. And some requests get a lot of views. Thousand views for this one, withdrawn articles, lots of people interested. So this becomes a priority. We don't change for one person, we change for multiple people. If a thousand people look at a feature request, that's a really good sign. So you have a chance to add as many features as you want to get all of your friends. Look at reviewers and Orchid. So they want Orchids for reviewers and a lot of people and a lot of views. But really the biggest one is this one. That's interesting. Sorry uh, to go so fast. The biggest one is withdrawn articles, when someone withdraws an article. So this feature of feature request, excuse me, this feature request um, is your way to add new ideas. I can't guarantee it happens quickly. Um, you can also hire us to build something. If a group of Indonesian journals want to see some changes, they can also put together some funding. And we sometimes take special requests and build them 
um, on the basis of funding and support. Otherwise, we have to raise the funding. All right, just to review where we've been here, I want to remind you that Indonesia is the largest user of OJS, and the success of our software, in a way, is a measure of the research activity in Indonesia. You have a great deal to be proud of in every discipline, from students, undergraduates, right through to senior professors and senior researchers. And I am delighted, as I said, to be here speaking to you about this. And I want to turn this back to my hosts. And I would <clears throat> invite questions. I especially appreciate written questions. But I'm happy to take whatever you want to provide and see if I can answer them. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Arbane, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. John. There are so many things that would be update. There are so many things also we can discuss. We have already several questions in Q&A. Would you like to see? Me, yes, we let will me go. have discuss about this. Um, so, yeah, in our Q&A, we have several questions for you and several reactions also. Uh, okay. For example, like here we have Pa Azam said that uh, this is the wonderful development for Mr. Bobur also. It is a great improvement. But there, there is also uh, several questions about uh, PKP in futures. So okay. this is uh, from... What, what will be the future of PKP? Uh, no, no, let me uh, read the question first. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I will read the question from uh, Pak Ratodi, Mr. Ratodi. The developer, Pak Ratodi, uh, could you give me a chat box that you are still here? So I will deliver your question to Prof. John. How about the development of open access education has started to gain the momentum here? So uh, Pak Ratodi said that we have the momentum of open access development in Indonesia. But then he also asked, how will PKP in the future develop a more open platform in every line of scientific journal publications? Okay. That would be uh, the first question that we will discuss. It's, it's, it's interesting to discuss. Thank you, Prof. John. You can uh, answer directly. Okay. So PKP for 25 years has been developing new platforms. We have a journal platform that is used by students and faculty. We have a book platform called Open Monograph Press that is used for uh, course books, that is used for open educational resources, that is used for scholarly books, that is used for edited books. And we have open preprint systems, which is used for preprints. Now that's quite a lot. There are more things that we could develop. And I invite suggestions in the community forum, um, which I showed you just a moment ago. Um, and I want to suggest that if people go to the community forum, they can make other suggestions. The future of PKP is with Simon Fraser University, right here, SFU. Um, and you can be confident that it is going to survive me uh, and others um, because the university is fully supportive of it. Is there another question I could answer? Okay. 
Thank you for your answer. Uh, maybe uh, Pak Ratodi bisa dipromot. Uh, whether Pak Ratodi have another feedback questions? So I have another question here actually, but uh, probably the first person who asked have more feedbacks about your answer. So we will promote him to be the panelist so that he can speak uh, directly to you. But if there is no answers and you said yes in chat, we can move to the second question from Bu Mutrofin. Actually, he uh, she is here right now. So she is asking you about the features about the outer credit. Uh, so, so the I article genesis, uh, when the articles submitted, sent, revised, or accepted, it's already available online. That's a uh, feedback from uh, Bu Mutrofin, or we carry uh, Mami Mutrofin, that uh, how about if you are considering to add features about the author's credit. So yeah, right. inside these author credits, uh, we have the article genesis. Inside it, we have the data about the articles, uh, when the article sent, when it revised, when it accepted, and it will be available online. It will be nice. So that's a, that's like a feedback or that's what we call helpful. it, the ideas. Yes. Yeah. So let me say, first of all, that we are building in, uh, for 3.5, we're building in the credit system for authors. Okay. Um, so it will launch. Sorry? Yeah, it will launch shortly. Uh, so next, in, in 24, 2024. Oh, in 2024, okay. Yes, so it's not, I'm afraid it's not immediate. Uh, it's not to... immediate, okay. We are looking for for that yes. moment. But uh, so you have already this development actually in version 3.4. Yes. Okay, that That's would exactly. answer your question, Bu Mutrofin, yeah. She's here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so 3.5, we have people working on it. You can see here. Okay. So that's the version of 3.5. So you have the deposit distribution and so on in 3.5. But we're still waiting for 3.4 first. Yeah. Uh, so 3.4 is available now. Mm -hmm. And you can install it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't have credit, and that's okay. coming. Oh, that's coming. Okay. Thank you. Okay, not in immediate. <laughs> Do you want to ask directly? Okay. So uh, here we have uh, Mr. Bobur. Okay. Are you already in the Zoom and promote as panelists? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, Mr. Bobur will ask you direct questions. He is here in Indonesia, but actually he is from Uzbek. So uh, I will let him to talk to you directly. Go on, Mr. Bobur. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, turn on. Am I audible? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, good day, Professor. Uh, Joe Wedinski, uh, actually, I am mm, so <laughs> sorry for interruption. I am Bobur Sobirov, PhD uh, from Uzbekistan. Uh, here I am representing new project with the collaboration of UMSIDA and LGI. It's called Silk Road Research Network. <clears throat> Your presentation and uh, speech was very interesting, and I have noticed that in Uzbekistan nowadays and in Central and East Asia, just 213 journals implemented by PKP and OGS. This is very less, and we are on starting, uh, let's say, step. It's, uh, uh, let's say, comparing with Indonesia, it's very less. As you have mentioned already in Indonesia, 50,000 journals already using OGS. So the question and the offer is that, we do not have knowledge of implementing OGS and PKP products in Uzbekistan. There is no pro there is no programs of uh, let's say knowledge. 
So the question and suggestion is that how can we organize uh, some kind of uh, collaborative uh, program of teaching and implementing of the OGS products throughout Central Asia? Actually, in Asia, there are five uh, countries like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. But I have collaboration with most of, let's say, universities. All of them nowadays needed to implement journals, needed to implement OGS in order to get indexing, in order to be included and listed on QS rating. Actually, there is a missing of knowledge and skills. So the question is how we can implement this? How uh, are there any kind of uh, programs, non governmental, non profitable programs to teach our researchers, our editors to implement correctly this kind of product? I think it will help and boost the number of implementation of the journals and OGS in this region. Thanks for your reply. That's a, thank you for your question. Um, that's a very encouraging um, response. We have a, uh, to think that we could develop more in Central Asia, we have a PKP school um, that, uh, let me put the link in the chat again. Um, uh, I just entered it into the chat for everybody. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can see the PKP school in the website. Uh, and we uh, also, we have, um, we have, uh, we also have full documentation with videos. I will add that to the chat as well. Um, so that's enough to get started. But I would invite you um, to speak to Arbane about getting my email. And you can email me and we have people who uh, specialize in this kind of work. Um, so we have websites to support and we have developers. So if you send me an email, I will put you in touch with people. Um, we have been in Central Asia, I'm not sure where we have been, I'd have to check. Um, but we have, um, we have uh, 25 languages, so if you do languages, we could see uh, um, oops, Um, well, I guess I can't show you all the languages very easily. Sorry. Thought I could. Uh, no, I can't. Um, we have multiple languages the la it's available in. Um, and Bahasa is one of them. Um, but we I'm not sure about the, the languages of Central Asia. So I hope that's a good start for you. And yeah. uh, Bain has my email address. Actually, actually, in Central Asia, we can uh, speak and we can easily use different languages, but major language could be considered as Russian language. Uh, most of people nowadays uh, can speak, young people can speak easily. Uh, IELTS uh, is already common and can speak easily English. So according to language, no problems. Actually, we have some companies there, like our company, I am representing a company in Uzbekistan, and we are also working on this, but the project is not public. We are getting help from RGI or other companies or, let's say, organizations to get an uh, idea. But I think there should be com community and public knowledge should be shared to universities. University should get an idea because most of them nowadays using just print version of the journal. They do not know how to install, how to run, how to use plugins. They do not know about this one. The case is this one. We are already running more than 50 journals with the help of Indonesian partners. We have idea, but we are private company. We would like to make it public one with the help of you and RGI. I think it would be very interesting project if we launch today the project called Silk Road Research Network. By this, we can easily go throughout 
Central Asia and this region. And I hope soon, in recent years, it will be doubled or triple. Let's say result could be face it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. So we have time for one more question or so. Okay, so I have already one more questions that I choose from the Q and A. So there are also uh, the question is from Mr. Azam, but uh, can I add one short questions first uh, of John? It's the question about it. It's a it's no questions actually, but you can explain about the reason why the OJS project was stopped. Why the OJS? Why was it uh open conference system o ocs yes yes ocs sorry sorry yes ocs i mispronounced we, that that's okay we dropped it okay uh, yeah you drop it uh so could you explain just a little uh explanation about the history about behind it we we dropped it because there were so many other programs that we thought were better okay and and so we felt we weren't helping. It was, each program takes a lot of work. And when we looked, okay. there were free programs that were much better. Okay, so you drop it because probably you want to focus on OGS only. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, not so only. We still do monograph, OPM, okay. OMP, rather OMP and OPS. Yeah. Yes, okay. but I, you know, I appreciate that. We get that question all the time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, the next uh, question is uh, from Mr. Azam. Uh, he's here also, actually, but he's asking about the software developer that you have uh, since 2001, when you, are, when you were started PKB in 2001, how you gather the theme? So I, I'm the okay. only one. Uh, You're the only, only one. I'm the only one from 2001. Mm -hmm. And and look how old I am already. So, okay. uh, so the, uh, but we have some from 2005. So we have okay. some that are 18 years, not 25. And they come because they like the mission. They come okay. and work for us and stay because they think the work is important. They don't want to work for Google. They want to work for public knowledge. Okay. We have only, we're based in Vancouver and we only have, we have 30 people, 35 people and only three in Vancouver. We have people in India, two people in India, in Brazil, in Russia, in the Ukraine. We have people in Africa, South Africa. So the only way we could build the software team is to go find people around the world. Okay. And it isn't easy, but once we get them, once they join, they stay. Yeah, that's nice. It's a nice history because you've told us that OJS is a university. That's a very... Mm, you know, for me, it's a very, we, uh, we have, yeah, it's touched my heart that you said OJS is a university. So you say that this is, can you explain it more why it is OJS is university? That's my personal question, actually. Sorry for the audience. So OJS, are you asking about the university? Yeah, you said that OJS is a university because it's a project. It, it's part of the university. So we, okay. we, so I'm a professor. Uh, and as a professor, I was working at the, at, not at, at Simon University. Fraser University, but now I am a professor at Simon Fraser University. So we have kept our university connection at Stanford, at the University of British Columbia, and Simon Fraser University. And those three universities have been very key. It's been where I've been a professor. And that's been an important part of the project is the, the connection with the, the university um, okay. part of that. And it's universities, there are many departments in Indonesia, university departments that are publishing journals. I have seen that. Yes. 
wanted to tell you that we have a PKP person coming in February to Indonesia, to Jakarta and to other parts of Indonesia for two weeks. So we're very excited about our first visit, actually about our third visit, been before, but uh, Aruj uh, will be visiting in Indonesia two weeks in February of 2024. Okay, in February, we will be looking forward to meet you in person. Uh, can we have one more question? Actually, we have three, but one more would be okay, right? Uh, timekeeper, yes. is that okay for one more question? Okay, so um, it, this is for um, uh, Mr. Rizky Fadil Pratama. Uh, dear uh, Ms. Uh, Prof. John, as you said that Indonesia has the most published journal using OES, uh, the main reason is because it's starting from 2016 and 2017. The government requires journal accreditation with various criteria based on U OJS. However, uh, among these criteria, some are not yet available in the basic OJS features, such as the function to find out unique visits with it within a certain time and a dedicated page for editor or reviewer profiles, which is directly connected to their profile identifier, like the index, uh, the index one, Scopus, Web of Science and Orchid and Astra. Is there a possibility, so the question is here, is there a possibility that in the future, OGS will be developed to suit the needs of our country? Also, all the great improvement, as you mentioned before, would that also available in other version of OJS? I think this is the important question. Uh, is that all will be available in older version of OJS 3.2, 3.3, or even 2.4? Because some of the journals still using the OJS uh, version 2. Yes. So we are going to, uh, when we come to Indonesia, in February, we will be taking very close, will be paying very close attention and taking notes on these issues. But we also are going to lead a workshop on upgrading OJS because OJS 2 is not supported. OJS 2 is not being upgraded or, or protected. And so we have about a third of the journals in Indonesia are still on version two. And we're hoping that we can help Indonesia upgrade all of the journals to version three. It doesn't have to be 3.4, but it shouldn't be two. Okay. So when we come in February, we will be setting up workshops for upgrading and teaching how to upgrade. Okay. So I'm hoping that you and Arbane and others will attend these workshops and we can bring some technical people in to help you learn how to do the upgrades. And then okay. you'll, you will get all of the features of the new features. At the same time, I think that Indonesia is important enough to us that we can do some development to support the educational use of OJS for students who graduate. Okay. But that is to be discussed in February. Okay. We'll be there, Rouge, my colleague, will be there for two weeks. And during that time, we will set up one or two workshops about upgrading, but we'll also have discussions about the educational use by students of the system and how we can improve that. Okay, so uh, in the 2024 in February, uh, can I ask uh, who would be your partner for the workshops later? Okay. Uh, I think I think our RJI. Okay, I that's, that's nice to hear. Journal, yes. Yes, I think that we... Um, we need to, uh, let me get a Rouge's name here, just so I can share this with you. Cause you, uh, here. yeah, yeah, we can see that's our, 
Uh, that's our chief. Yes. So her name is Iruj Nami, Nizami. Let me put it in the chat. Yeah, he uh, so, he's here okay. actually. So Iruj will will be coming. Yeah, he's here actually, right? No. Is she in the webinar? The participant. Yes, he is here. Yes, he is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is uh, greeting everyone. <laughs> Okay, Prof. John, I think the time's up for our discussions. Uh, we will have more discussion later in the future because we already have also uh, Prof. Ariana Besseril. Uh, I'm I'm greetings, Prof. Ariana. Ah, Ariana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here too. Okay, great. Okay. Bye. Nice uh, we're, to see we're you. <laughs> Ariana, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Any both. other surprises? Do we have any other surprises? Is my brother there? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, Prof. John Wilinski, thank you for uh, your explanations about PKP and the updates and anything that relate with our futures in uh, plans and engagement and also anything that relate with PKP. Thank you very much. It's very fruitful explanations.